In this tutorial we will fix a simple bug where the AI would randomly break at the end of the track for no reason. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so before we go ahead and actually fix the bug, let's go ahead and take a look at the bug in action. So if I go ahead and press play now, you can see the AI car drives in front of me, drives and then randomly breaks and then drives again. Now it's totally fine that he breaks over here because this is a turn, but for some reason he breaks in the straight. He doesn't do this anywhere else, only in the straight, and that's to do with this over here. This is where the track loops, and that is where this error is. So, let's go ahead and go fix it. Um, I'll explain more about it once we actually get to the code. Uh, but where is that code? Well, if we open up our content browser, and if you're in the content folder, you want to go to the AI folder, and then open up the BP underscore AI path, and then you want to go to the get closest location to AI path function, under my blueprint, and here is our problem. So, for us to calculate our steering, we add an additional distance above the distance we are along the spline, and then we get the location of that and feed that to the AI car. But there's one problem, right? The spline has a limited length, and so, at one point, when we get the distance of our, uh, the distance we are along the spline, and we added an additional distance to that, we are going to go over the length limit of the spline, and this causes a lot of problems. So all we need to do is we need some way to check when we are going over the length of the spline with the additional distance, and then we just need to make sure it doesn't happen. Now how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do that by first getting the length of the spline. So to do that, we're going to go to top left, under components, we're going to drag in our spline, we're going to drag off of that, and we're going to type in get length. And there's going to be two options, but we want to use the get spline length. And now we know how long the spline is. Now we're also going to drag off this return value and type in greater then. So we're going to use the greater operator over here. We're going to disconnect its connection and connect this return value to the bottom and then connect this uh, plus a result over here in the top. So the idea is that if our additional distance plus uh, the distance we are on the spline is bigger than the total length of the spline, we should run code. Now what code should we run? Well, in this case, we only have two possibilities. We have for this to go over the limit and not go over the limit. So in this case, we can use a select float to clean up this code. So we're going to drag off this boolean. We're going to type in select float. We're going to use that option over here. And so what happens is if this total distance along spline is greater than, then that means it will pick A. If it isn't, it will pick B. Now we can go ahead and plug this uh, return value into the distance. And we can just move this code over here, but to the right to create space. Okay, so let's say the uh, get distance along spline and this additional distance is bigger. What should we do? Well, in that case, all we need to do is we need to take this uh, calculation we did here and then drag off of that and do a subtract. So we're going to type in subtract and use that. And now all we have to do is we need to subtract the total uh, length of the spline from this additional length or additional distance. And that will give us a correct length that doesn't overflow the limit. So... In this case, I'm going to select the spline and get spline length. I'm going to press Control copy and Control uh, paste to paste that in. And then I'm going to subtract that over there and connect that into the A value. If um, there isn't an overflow, this means that this calculation is valid. And we can just output it over there. Now we can go ahead and clean up our code. So I'm going to move the select float a bit here and move this over here. This over here should be good. Um, actually, I think let's just move this a bit away, move this a bit lower. Then this code over here, we're going to move it uh, closer to the bottom. Move this a bit down. Okay, and this we're going to just move a bit to the side, move this there. And this code here uh, can be a bit confusing to read, so I'm just going to uh, comment this. So I'm going to select all of these nodes over here, uh, specifically these press C to comment, and I'm going to call this a uh, stop um, additional distance 
from going over total total length of spline and yeah that's descriptive enough this one i'm going to move a bit out move the spline out as well move this a bit upper make sure it makes a straight line move this a bit down move this a bit up most of this video is actually just uh, rearranging this comment block currently anyway you just move this out and yeah this is a bit more readable still a bit messy but a lot more readable than it was and uh, let's go ahead and test our code. So we're going to compile, save, hit play, and let's see if the bug happens. He goes in the straight and he doesn't break early anymore. He only breaks at the turn. That could have been a fluke. So let's go ahead and press play to see again. And he just drives, doesn't break early, only breaks um, when needed. So that's good. We fixed the bug. We fixed all the issues with this currently. And um, yeah, that's it for this tutorial. In the next episode, we'll go ahead and do the um, actual two-lane system so that the air car can use more of the track and not be limited to the single spline. And uh, that video should be out by somewhere Monday, Tuesday. But uh, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you guys for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. Hit like if you liked the video. Hit dislike if you didn't. And see you guys in the next one. Good night, everybody.